Hey friends, welcome to She's in Her Apron. Okay, I just put my apron on and I'm about to get going on an Easter dinner. I'm so glad you're here because I'm gonna be trying out some new recipes today. Now, I always say that when you're cooking like a holiday dinner, never to try new recipes the day of, but it is actually a week before Easter and I'm gonna test some things out. Our dear friends Beth and Chris are coming over and I thought, Let's try some new recipes. And my friend Beth is always up for trying new recipes. I did start the day by putting a ham in the slow cooker. It has been cooking away. So this morning I took the ham out. It was a beautiful ham that we got from Costco at a great deal. Oh my goodness. So it ended up coming out to be like $1.98 a pound. And I put some brown sugar at the bottom of my slow cooker. Then I put the ham in and I noticed that the top was still a little too big to put the cover on. And I could cover the whole thing with the aluminum foil because we did have church and we were leaving the house and I never leave the house with the aluminum foil over it. So I cut the top off and I put it in a baggie, in a Ziploc bag. I'm gonna actually put this in the freezer if I don't make my split pea soup. So I've got good portions of ham here that we can use in any recipe. And then I topped it with some Pineapple. I poured some pineapple juice and some tidbits down on top and added some more brown sugar and I sprinkled in some clove and this has been cooking low and slow. So in probably about an hour-ish, I'll move it to warm. But oh, it smells insane already. Uh-oh, there's Cece. Hello, Cece. This has held my aprons on my wall in my pantry. Hello, girls and the weight of my aprons took it down. So I need Mr. Toodles, my husband Derek, to fix that. So yes, I do own a lot of aprons. I need to grab my Bosch mixer. I don't know why I've been keeping my Bosch in that corner because I'm starting to make homemade bread again weekly. So I just need to keep this in a more convenient spot. I have a KitchenAid and a Bosch. I love my Bosch. It can do big batches of things, especially when I make three loaves of bread. I like using it for this. So we are going to make some hot cross buns. Never made them before. And the recipe says it makes about 12. So then I'm gonna try to just make some normal rolls as well, in case the hot cross buns are a failure. Okay, I'm gonna make a jalapeno popper dip as an appetizer and I am going to use some of this corn like kind of more like fresh corn instead of the canned corn so what I'm going to do is get first before I start on the buns is get the corn off the husks and then get them cooking they do need to boil for a bit and then cooled all right I was at Hobby Lobby and I saw this contraption the other day and I'm like all right I gotta try this. This is a cob corn stripper. Safely strip whole cobs of corn, safely. I cut myself on everything. I'll be the judge of that. All right, let's see if I could do this. Let's see, I need, I think with the recipe, three cups or four cups of the kernels. Oh, I have a feeling this is gonna spray on me. Oh, you need upper body strength for this. Forget it, I've got none. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh my gosh. Wow, okay. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I kinda had buyer's remorse, even though like I got it on sale, it was like 40% off. It was just a couple of dollars, but I thought, here you go again, Kimmy, buying another little contraption that you don't need. But I'm not the only one who does it. Like, Derek does it too. Like, we love little kitchen gadgets. But, holy cow. That was awesome. Does take some upper body strength, but I'm a weakling. Like, if I were to hang from, like, anything, you know, and I had to hang there to save my life, forget about it. Like, I'm going down. All right, I'm gonna keep going with this. This, this was cool. Oh, I gotta make sure that I use where the teeth are. I started that one going that way, so. Derek has more strength, so he can push and twist. I mean, it worked. I mean, you twist, look at that. Oh, it's not bad. It's not bad. 
Look at all that. Look at all that corn. See you guys, my pantry gets disheveled just like everybody else's. But if you've seen my video on how to organize your pantry by zones, it makes this cleanup very easy. So if you'd like to see that video, I'll have it linked for you below. Okay, I did get four cups of corn. It's on the stove. I'm just gonna put this in a bag and put it in the refrigerator. And we can add this to a salad during the week. So I have the corn on the stove. I'm gonna get it to a boil. I have some cream cheese softening right now. I do have my oven preheated to 100 because we're gonna proof the hot cross buns in here and do that. It'll speed things up a bit. It wouldn't be Easter without deviled eggs. I have my like rubbery silicone-y trivet down at the bottom here. Just gonna fill this up with eggs. I'm also going to put more than I need in here so we have eggs in the morning and you know for the week and breakfast and this will get me ahead for the week probably got about eh, a cup of water I never measure when I put the water in Lid on I'm gonna high pressure this for four minutes and it is perfect hard-boiled eggs for the orange jello salad, I'm also gonna need some cottage cheese and mandarin oranges that I need to use up first. So two mandarin oranges. Corn is cooking away just for a couple of minutes. Okay, so I put the cottage cheese in the bowl, sprinkled the orange jello in. Now I'm dissolving it with the cottage cheese. Mix, mix, mix. This is the most refreshing spring summer salad, but we eat this all year. It's so good. My mandarin oranges and the leftover pineapple that I used on the ham. We're gonna finish out this can of tidbits. There's a little liquid in there, but it's all good. So look, I double dutied one 20 ounce can of tidbits for the ham and for the salad. All right, now that's all incorporated and the jello has dissolved. We'll add the um, Cool Whip in. Here's our whipped topping. I had this set out before I left for church, so that way it could thaw. So you definitely want to start this hours before you serve it and get this in the fridge to set up, especially since it still had a little bit of the pineapple juice in it. I love making this when we serve up like barbecue sandwiches, chicken barbecue sandwiches, ribs, like anything red meat. So now I'm going to cover this with some cling wrap. Oh, this is so good. This is the stuff right here. Bring this to a potluck and people are gonna devour it, they're gonna love it. I also make another one like this that calls for pistachio pudding and marshmallows, coconut, the pineapple, the cottage cheese. I'll leave a link to the video that has both these recipes in it. So good. Take this leftover corn and put it in this container to use during the week. Yum. This does need to cool down. Instapot is done, I'm gonna release it and then get a water bath ready. Okay, of course this is a jalapeno popper corn salad, so you're gonna need two jalapenos. Look how big these jalapenos are. I mean, this is my hand, this is huge. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is just use this big one here. Okay, I'm gonna put some gloves on and I am gonna keep the peppers in it, I think. Let's make it spicy, especially for the guys. Okay, I am going to chop up some jalapenos. It says discarding the membranes and seeds, seeds, but I think what I'll do is keep some seeds on hand, and then if I feel like later, like it needs the seeds, I'll throw them in. So I won't throw those away quite yet. Okay, I've got the jalapenos all chopped up. I'm gonna add jalapenos and I just got to get this in the fridge so I mean I put this in the fridge and it cooled a little but I gotta get this in we're gonna put mayonnaise and sour cream and cheese so I need a bigger bowl I am gonna chop up another jalapeno I just think it might need that kick okay so we're gonna use pepper jack cheese cheddar cheese some bacon and I already have some bacon in the fridge that is pre-cooked 
So I'm gonna get that going and crisp it up. So I'm gonna add this in and then I'm gonna start shredding my cheeses. So I only needed a cup of cheddar cheese, but we are going to need some cheddar cheese for the pineapple casserole. Now we're gonna shred the pepper jack. We need a cup of this. Okay, we need mayonnaise and sour cream. Going into the food storage room for mayonnaise, and I need some sales happening on mayo. I might be out, you guys. Oh my gosh. I didn't even bother shopping my shelves for it because I always have it. We've come into my mother-in-law's food storage room and we're gonna steal slash borrow <laughs> some mayonnaise. Sweet. I would like to share with you how I plan our holiday dinners. Did you guys know I have planners? I do. Our website is linked below. Okay, let me share with you what the Easter looks like. I have a section for ready, set, party and it gives you a countdown to help you plan three to four weeks before, two weeks before, a week before, the week of, the day before, and the day of. And then we have a to-do list, your dinner. You have an appetizer, main vegetable, sides, desserts, and drinks, and then help you with a grocery list for all the fun sections of the store. And then if you're doing any assignments, we have that all laid out for you. And then a cooking schedule if you need that, and a, like a block cooking schedule. Okay, we're starting to set the table. Derek's helping me with that. And I got these placemats from Home Goods, I think. Look at these plates. And I got them for like, how much did the stickers say on the plates? A dollar. A dollar. And I grabbed eight of these. That was all that they had. So whoever donated them, that's all they brought. I looked, I scoured, but they are absolutely beautiful. And I went to Tuesday morning and Home Goods to get kind of creamy um, napkins and uh, they had one of each of this style. Not anymore. I was like, oh, seriously, the luck. Oh well, if they don't match perfect, who cares? So now I'm just going in back here to grab my box with the napkin rings and then we'll decorate with some of this Easter decor here. Need a cup of sour cream and a cup of mayo. Man, this makes a big appetizer. This isn't even doubled. Okay, we're gonna need uh, about a half a cup of cooked chopped bacon. We're gonna get this warmed up in the microwave to crisp it up a bit. The seasonings we're gonna use is chili powder, garlic powder, onion powder, ground cumin, paprika and salt and pepper. And then I have my two ounces of cream cheese. So I'm gonna use my half a teaspoon. So you'll see me like doubling or whatever. Just bear with me. We're gonna need a teaspoon of chili powder, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, two teaspoons of cumin. So I need four of these. Oh my gosh, I'm running low on cumin. I need to put that on my shopping list. One, two, three, four. And a teaspoon of paprika. We'll leave the paprika out because we're gonna need that for our deviled eggs. All right, we're gonna get this all mixed. I am so intrigued by this appetizer. The reviews on it, everyone loves it. So I'm excited to try it, see what we think, and then add my twist to it later on. It just doesn't have as much cream cheese as I thought it would be since it's a jalapeno popper dip. I mean, jalapeno poppers, you have a lot of cream cheese. But this makes a ton of dip, you guys. And I do need to salt and pepper this and get it wrapped up and get it in the fridge so it can cool and marry. Oh, we got all this gorgeous bacon. Let's just get this 
crumbled in. Okay, you know this is gonna be good if it's calling for bacon, right? I mean, hello. And what would a jalapeno popper be without the bacon? Well, it is a jalapeno popper corn salad, but I can't imagine just eating this like a salad salad or a side dish. You definitely need your chips or something to scoop it up in. I'm wondering if hollowing out a mini pepper and having this in there would be so good. All right, now we can mix in the bacon. I'm gonna clean up the sides of the bowl and then get this wrapped and put in the fridge. We're gonna need the sour cream. Oh my gosh, it is 3.49. It's pretty much four o'clock. It always takes longer cooking and filming, but I love it. But man, you have to account for a lot more time. Okay, the eggs have been sitting in an ice bath and it's all melted, so we gotta get these cracked and ready to turn into a deviled egg. We're going in my freezer for my yeast. Whenever I open up a big package of yeast, I put it in a carton or a Ziploc bag and keep it in my freezer and it'll last forever. I need about eight grams of yeast because this recipe says a package of yeast, but since I don't use a package, I'm really glad instead of me having to go look on Google, it said eight grams of yeast. So I need to change the scale from ounces to grams. Nine, eight, there we go, eight grams. So that's less than a tablespoon, so at least I have an idea. That right there is a packet of yeast. And we're doing this with milk instead of water. We're gonna need a cup of milk, and we're gonna warm this up in the microwave. And this is where I've gotta be very careful because I need to warm the milk to 100 to 110 degrees. <laughs> I have a bowl, about a cup of raisins, and in the microwave, I just boiled some water, a cup of water we're gonna pour on here and the raisins are gonna soak. Raisins, cup of hot boiling water. Those are going to soak. I'm gonna put those to the side. I'm gonna pause on this for a second on the hot crust buns. I've got to get the casserole in the oven because sometimes the potato casserole takes forever to heat through. We're gonna do serving eight people. So you need two pounds. This is one pound. So you need, well, one pound, 14 ounces. So we're just gonna do two of these. They're cold now, they're not as frozen. But I'm wondering, there's eight of us, but I don't know, do I double this? It's hard to tell sometimes what I should double and what I should not double. I don't know, we'll do two. One. So this is just a little over two pounds, but who cares? All right, I think I'm gonna add some minced onions to this recipe. Last year I made similar recipe to this. I'm basically doing that recipe, but I'm gonna add some fresh onions to it. So we're gonna get some onion going. Probably about a couple of tablespoons of just minced onion. Nothing grand. And you know how I say I always cut myself? Yeah, I did it. There's my Band-Aid. See you guys? Constantly cutting myself. If you're new here, yeah, that's what I do. That's probably about a fourth a cup of minced onion. You can't go wrong with onion. You can't put too much in this. So I'm just gonna throw this in there. My hubby Derek is cracking open the eggs, the deviled eggs, getting those ready. All right, I am gonna shred up this about six ounces of sharp white cheddar cheese. And then we're gonna add this cheddar cheese in here as well. So I'm just gonna do that. This whole guy shredded and put in there too. And this is extra sharp white cheddar cheese, yum. Yum. I'm putting all that on there. Oh yeah, get in there. Yes, it's unhealthy. But when we made it last year with this soup, it was so good. So we're gonna add a can of cheddar cheese soup. I'm gonna add what's ever left of the sour cream, I mean, Maybe eight ounces, maybe. And I have more sour cream. Got a brand new container. This is 16 ounces. I don't know, we'll probably do about that. <laughs> so you probably need about two cups of sour cream. I'm guessing that that was two cups. So when it comes to the spices, last year I did um, a half of 
tablespoon of paprika. And then I'm gonna do probably about a tablespoon of garlic powder. And then I want some seasoned salt. And I'm just gonna eyeball this, I don't know. I'll just... Sure. Let's do some pepper. Okay, I'm gonna put some gloves on to mix this, because last year it was a pain in the butt with a spoon. So I'm gonna get in here, mush it all together, and get it in our pan. And I'm gonna spray my pan with some cooking spray and get this in. I'm having Derek take turns. My hands are like ice for mixing that. I couldn't take it anymore, my poor fingers. So Derek's just gonna plop it in. I sprayed the pan. Oven is preheated to 350 degrees. Just give it a little massage. You could do a cracker topping or add more cheese. Put some foil on this and get it in the oven. Okay, I heated up the milk again because it cooled down from making the potato casserole. I have this candy thermometer in here and it's saying, uh, I mean, it's past 100 now. So I think we're good on the temperature. I'm gonna add this to a bowl and we're gonna add our yeast and some other ingredients. Okay, I'm gonna add the yeast in. Okay, then a tablespoon of sugar. Right, yes. Now we're gonna let this activate. And it could take about seven to 10 minutes. Okay, it's gonna get foamy and bubbly. So I'm gonna just set this aside. You're gonna melt six tablespoons of butter, but it says don't get it hot. Just melt it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna melt it. It's like burning bread for me. You know, gonna burn the bread. Like when I put it under the broiler. And when it comes to butter, I'm known for letting it explode in the microwave. I mean, the butter has a hole in it. <gasps> I have holes. <laughs> Who knows? What movie I'm talking about if you saw it? I have holes. Okay, it's gonna need a little more time. Close. We're getting closer. It's a tricky thing. Something that I can easily screw up. I'm gonna leave it alone. It is melted. Not hot. We have butter. Okay, so I need flour. My jar is out. And I just don't feel like opening one of my big, like 20, 25 pound, pound bags of flour. This is flour that I put in a brown paper sack that I food savored. No oxygen packet. So this is one way that you can stretch your flour if you don't want to put it in a bucket with a mylar bag and oxygen absorbers and all that this is one way of doing it so we actually have a big rubbermaid bin that is full of things that look like kilos of like <laughs> even though you can't see it kind of looks like drugs like we've got packages of drugs so this is 10 cups 3.6 pounds of unbleached flour like all-purpose flour i also have in there two cups of flour so if anyone needs any flour we can be like here so I'm just gonna cut open this bag. And the reason why you put it in a brown sack is because if you were just to put flour in this and then food saver it, you'd ruin your machine. The flour would get everywhere. And if you're worried about bugs, stick this in your freezer before you go to use it. You're fine. All right, so I'm gonna open this so we can make these buns. I hope we get to have them tonight. The rate I'm moving. Okay. I did tape it down. Ooh, look at this. This is our yeast mixture. It's all bubbly, ready for us. So we gotta get cruising. I'm just whisking up this flour because it had no air, it was clumped. And now the air's getting through it and it's getting light again. So we need four cups. Two, three, four. Four and three and a half tablespoons. Wow, that's very precise. One, two, Three and a half. All right, I am looking for cinnamon, which is right here. And then I need salt. 
allspice and nutmeg. Boy, allspice. I bet that's a little container I have. That allspice isn't something I use a lot of. Nutmeg. Aha. Uh -huh. See? I knew it'd have to be a little guy. Oh, really? Again, we're gonna use my half a teaspoon. So for cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons. So three of these. A half a teaspoon of allspice. Fourth a teaspoon of nutmeg. Okay, fourth. And then for salt, a teaspoon. Okay. Salt. Whisk this together, and then we'll set this aside. We're not gonna use the Bosch for this one, we're gonna use the KitchenAid. Okay, to my KitchenAid, I'm gonna add eggs in, so two eggs. Then you need a third cup of that sugar, and then we're gonna add the melted butter in. And it wants this mixed good, but I don't want to take out like the whisking beaters because I don't think I'm going to need that for any other part of the recipe because I think we're going to add the dough and it's going to knead. So I'm like, eh, do I, you know. I'm also going to add some orange zest in here. Then it says to add your yeast mixture in and whisk it until combined. That feels smooth. Okay, we're gonna add our hook back on. About a third at a time, we're gonna incorporate the flour mixture. Using mixer with dough hook on low speed. Okay. Oh my gosh! Okay. Lock that so I don't spray you. Now they say low speed, like this is low. So I'm guessing that's where it should be at. It's fun trying new recipes, but I don't have a clue of what I'm doing here. Like not at all. But I've been dying to make these. I feel like I'm doing this wrong. Use the dough hook on low speed or mix by hand. If using a dough hook, knead for five to seven minutes until the dough is shiny and smooth. I use a KitchenAid and I need on level two. Okay. And it says it's supposed to be sticky dough. We haven't quite gotten to that part yet. There's like all these little remnants at the bottom. I mean, it's sticky, which is what you want. It says it's gonna be sticky. It's gonna be fine, right? It's gonna be fine. It doesn't look like it's gonna be fine, but it could be fine. I'm gonna let it do its thing. Uh, let's do six minutes. Let's get going on the pineapple casserole. We're gonna need tidbits, tidbits. I don't want tidbits, these are all tidbits. I need pineapple chunks. We need two of the pineapple chunks. Oh, it's looking better. It's looking better, it's incorporated. Mr. Toodles is amazing, he fixed it. <laughs> I mean, my aprons have taken down a pantry door before, so. So it says that the dough will be quite sticky. I didn't overflower it. I don't know. I mean, it it's dough, and it's not sticky, sticky like it said it should be. Is it my altitude, like being in Utah? All right, I'm gonna add the raisins in and incorporate it. <laughs> we might not be having hot cross buns for a little treat after because I don't know what I'm doing but we will try and then I am gonna make rolls my quick quick rolls that make up super fast we can throw them in the oven we don't have to wait for them to rise and we'll have normal rolls but I was hoping well we'll see we'll see this still might come out great but there's a reason why the dough should be sticky Maybe it'll get sticky again with the raisins, trying to incorporate them. Get those raisins in there. Maybe once the raisins get in, then it gets sticky. Knead until it's well distributed. <laughs> okay. Oh, now it's starting to look like a mushy mess. 
You can't grab that other layer and put it in with the rest of the batter. Can you guys see that? Oh, man. Now it's, now it's sticky. Now it's sticky. <laughs> I might just need to do this last part by hand and screw this. It smells good. It smells way good. Turn that off. Okay, so I'm just going to incorporate this the best that I can and then do whatever the directions say to do next. And who knows, maybe this will turn out really good. I did my best. Now I think we have to get this in a bowl and let it rise. Okay, formed it into a ball as best as I could. Greased wool, and now I got a clean cheesecloth, nice and hot, drained it out good. You're gonna lay it over it, and you're gonna put this in a dry place, like warm place. So I'm gonna do my microwave because I need my oven, and it's above the stove, so it stays nice and warm. That's where I usually go to put my breads to rise, so I'm gonna let this sit in the microwave. We're gonna cut some asparagus into one inch pieces after we take the ends off. We're gonna make asparagus and mushroom au gratin. I've never made this before, but the picture I found on Pinterest, the recipe looks amazing. Okay, I'm draining the two cans of pineapple. I'm collecting the juice of it, and then we're gonna reserve six tablespoons of that juice, and the rest I'm just gonna freeze. Okay, I'm just gonna shred up a cup of cheddar cheese and just put it straight onto the pineapple. We're gonna make a pineapple casserole. This is a southern recipe, and once we tried it, we're hooked. And we we were told once we tried this, we would be, and yeah. Okay, we are sauteing up eight ounces of mushroom. Mm -mm. So Beth is helping me with the asparagus and mushroom au gratin recipe. And she's gonna make a white sauce, and she's like, can I just do my thing? And I was like, yes, do your thing. You can follow the recipe or not. I mean, so yum. Okay, I'm gonna make the sugar mixture and then we'll add the cheese on top. So we're in this bowl are going to mix a third cup of sugar and then six tablespoons of the pineapple juice and get that mixed up with five tablespoons of flour and then we're gonna mix it with this because this is what's gonna help it thicken when it cooks in the oven. Mm, and then we'll top it with that cheese. And then the crust, which is Ritz crackers. Okay, so she's adding some flour in to make a room. And then we'll add the cheese. I'm guessing it's next. Yeah. Mm. The asparagus with all the mushroom waiting mm, for its bath of like yumminess. Uh, oh, and it's milk too. Okay. And it's only two tablespoons of sherry, it's like nothing. Oh, okay. So we're gonna use some sherry cooking wine and you heard the substitutions Beth just said. So I'm being daring today and going for this, so hopefully it'll taste good. And then you need milk. I'll leave the recipe down below for you guys. So you'll need two tablespoons of the sherry wine and then how much milk? Two cups of milk. Two cups of milk. You wanna make sure that the flour gets nice and kind of browned, mm -hmm. kind of nutty, so that the flour's, you don't have that uncooked flour flavor. Oh yeah. Give it a second to heat oh, up yum, again. Yum, We'll also need the five tablespoons of flour to our sugar. Oh look, I do that all the time. So I need six tablespoons, one. I'm gonna mix that up. I wanna know who thought of this pineapple capsule. I have never heard of this before. I know it's a Southern thing and it is so good. I just, I always like to try to find out where the recipe like originated from, like what stemmed, like what happened to create it. That's why I like trying the Great Depression recipes, because you see what was formed after that, like what's come from some of them. All right, now we'll get this down. Mm. 
Okay. Okay, so once that's down, now you can add your cheese on top. Mm, that could be a little less than a, I might wanna add some more in there. Okay, now we're gonna work on our topping. So I have a package of Ritz crackers in this Ziploc bag, and I'm just gonna break them up. And then I'm gonna melt a fourth a cup of butter and mix it with these crackers and get it on top of this pineapple casserole. There we go. Voila. Look at that. So we have some mozzarella cheese. Okay. And then salt and pepper to taste. And I'll, let you, I'll let you be the judge of that. Mm. Yum. Can you ever have too much cheese? No, no way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yum. Okay, so it says to pour evenly over it, and then it's gonna cook in a 350 degree oven for about what, 30 minutes. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be good. Okay, we're gonna put this in the oven at the same time as the pineapple casserole. So I'm gonna get the topping on that so we can get them in the oven. Okay, we're gonna add the butter. And we're gonna make the flaky, flaky crust and get it on top. Okay, get the topping on. Spread it over. Okay, this is gonna cook for 350 degrees for about 28 to 30 minutes. And then we're gonna eat because we're starving. Look at Beth's layered salad. Oh my goodness. Romaine, bacon, eggs, peas, sharp white cheddar cheese, carrots, cucumbers, red onion. It's gorgeous. Oh my gosh. This looks good. But I could put some on another plate, but I just wanna spoon some up and taste it. And we're gonna use a Frito. But do you see what I mean? Where like, I think putting it inside like a small baby pepper. But yeah, Beth was saying a celery stick. Yeah. Okay, Beth, you can have the first taste. <laughs> but this makes a ton, you guys. So if you're gonna have a big crowd, do it because, well, now that I know I could half this recipe, cause this is, you're going home with some if you like it. <laughs> There's no way we're gonna eat all of this. I'm gonna give this a try. That's naughty. That is good. Well, I have said good day. <laughs> no one for nobody. <laughs> Me. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have that as our appetizer served up over there. Yes, it is so good, addicting. Match it with celery, more veggies, peppers, like stuffed in the sweet peppers would be so good. But with those burritos, okay. The, the dip is a hit. Like, do you like it? Mm, do, you think, do you think we should have kept the seeds of the jalapeno in it? Yes. I do too. So we did good for Beth. She can't handle the heat, but uh, it's so good. It's delicious. It's a keeper. Yum. Link for that recipe is down below. Careful. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, that's done. The pineapple casserole. This one wants to slip. Oh, I can't wait to try that one too. Oh my. Mm, mm, mm. That. Oh my gosh. Oh, mm. oh that one. Mm, mm. Whoa. That is hot. Look at that. Mm-mm. Okay, 
it did double. It got nice and big, so I'm gonna take it out, break it out into four sections, cut those in half, basically get 12 rolls, form them into rolls, and get them into this sprayed pan. And then they're gonna rise, so I'm gonna work on that. Potato casserole, ham, pineapple casserole, asparagus or gratin, and then the layered salad. Yum. And then I grew up eating ham with some applesauce on it. So I'm gonna open up a can of applesauce and I'm gonna have that on top of my ham. Derek actually made these deviled eggs. I told him what I do and he did it. So I'm excited to try his. This weather is so weird. Right? It's so normal what it used to be. All right, these were, but they're not. You know the food is good no matter what it is. Asparagus mushrooms. Very Asparagus mushrooms. More asparagus mushrooms. Ooh, yum. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at this cake. This is like the cake we all drool over when the Montours make it. And so I didn't even think that this could be their dessert choice for tonight. And I'm so glad it is. And that's walnuts on top, right? Pecan. Oh, pecan. Do pecan or pecan? Pecan. Pecan. What do you say, Beth? Pecan or pecan? Isn't pecan a bird? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Two, I say pecan. Two you can. say pecan? Two cans. I think I see, well, I think I see, say pecan. I don't know. Pecan. Look at that. Oh, and this is all homemade from scratch. And it's the best chocolate cake. It really is. I wish I could like give you a taste because it's amazing. We're gonna make a flour paste that's going to be the design of the cross on the buns. So I'm going to put in this baggie here, three fourths cup of flour, and then we're gonna add six to eight tablespoons of water. And I'm just gonna squish it up in this bag. You can whisk it in a bowl, but I'm just trying to get ahead here. And so I'm just squishing it up, blending it together, and then I'm gonna cut the tip of this bag so I could pipe it out and make crosses, but I'm having a heck of a time doing it. Grabbing a knife, just trying to make a cross on these buns. Okay, now that we've got our crosses on, we're gonna bake at 350 degrees for 28 to 30 minutes until the tops are golden brown. Well, <laughs> I tried my best. And that's what we got out of it. So this is going in the oven. Now we're gonna make a glaze. So you just need one to two tablespoons of jam and we're gonna use an apricot jam so we can make an apricot glaze. And to my jam, I'm going to add two to four teaspoons of hot water. So now it makes up a really nice sugar syrup. The pan has been out of the oven for probably about 10 minutes. It's still hot. Glaze will melt nicely on top. So I'm gonna take my brush and just glaze, put the glaze over the top. Okay, I'm gonna dish this up. They smell good. They look good. Okay, it is late. Our friends have left. They went home with leftovers and it was such a good night. So much good food that I noticed that I forgot to put out. Did you notice it when I showed the spread? Forgot to put out the orange jello salad. That, that wasn't the first time we ever forgot to put something out that we made. We've done that quite a bit, but that's okay. Now we have it made for during the week. I am planning to take a roast out in the morning and put it in the slow cooker um, and just let that go all day. So that will be really good with the roast. And they went home with a plate of these hot cross buns. Not 
bad, right? For the first time, I was nervous, I'm not gonna lie. But I pulled it off, and they were delicious, and they're really good warm. Later, if you're like, oh, I wish I had some more glaze, you can make more and put it on. Powdered sugar and milk, and put some vanilla extract in there, um, and just make your own like icing to put on top, but I did it, pulled it off. We had so much food. Derek's deviled eggs turned out great, by the way. They were so good. Um, we had lots of food and it was delicious. Pre-Easter dinner was great. I will leave the recipes down below for you. Um, if you make any of these, will you let me know what you do down below? So good. All right, if you need some more recipes for your upcoming holiday dinners, click on these videos here. I'll meet you over there. Thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you soon. Bye.